I listened to every single song in the Billboard Hot 100. That's six hours of music, most of which I'd never heard before. Here's a review of every single song and what I learned. Number 100, American Nights. Country starts the list. There's an interesting rhythmic variety in the chorus, and then there's like tuning issues, it's rough around the edges, and I think this is a great thing. There's a feeling of camaraderie between the musicians, and it has a kind of upbeat sadness or like a nostalgia to it. Six out of ten. Good. 99. Evergreen. Short and sweet, but it could be shorter. A minute and a half is a very strange length for a song. It should either be like 45 seconds or like two minutes, three minutes, you know? I don't really get the message or why this song is popular. 3 out of 10. 98. Sailor Song. Acoustic is making a comeback. Vocals far back, feel, every feel that I don't like very much. No drums or beat, just guitar, which is kind of a bold choice, I guess. The orchestral sounds creeping in at the end are nice, but overall this song is very bland. 4 out of 10. 97. New Woman. It's the first electronics-based song of the list. Upbeat with good groove, unique bass line. There's a switch up halfway through which kind of feels a bit like a fever dream that the rest of the song doesn't even take notice of. The two sections need to interact with each other and affect each other a bit more. Block form does not work super well in this style of music. The production is good though, so like 5 out of 10. 96. She's Somebody's Daughter. I've genuinely never listened to this much country music in my life. The music is really not very interesting in any way. The me message of the song is pretty shallow. It's like half treat women, right? But also because of their relationships to other people and mainly men, the family. I'm very conflicted about this, 2 out of 10. 95. You My Everything. I thought this was a joke. Like, genuinely, I thought it was a joke. The vocals are almost unlistenable to begin with. The beat is generic, dry, boring, and unflattering with some pretty obvious wrong notes throughout. It feels like we spent about an hour on Miss Max with no expression on their face at all. They did not enjoy making this. I really did not anticipate Drake being the best part of this song. But, you know, nothing matters anymore after listening to this. I regret that I had to listen to this whole song. The beat switch at the end is okay, but I'm much better than the rest of the track, so that gets it 1 out of 10. 94, My Kink is Karma, the first song that I've actually heard before. It's a pretty interesting harmony for this list. The tempo is kind of too slow for me to really get into. It sounds held back and like it wants to be faster, which is kind of interesting, but overall quite uncomfortable to listen to. The drum production is really cool, though, but I want the Nightcore version. 5 out of 10. I'm going to have to look up how to pronounce this. Chihiro. 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 93, Chihiro. It's got a good, low-key vibe. Billy's vocals really complement this muted, upbeat style. The bass is very addictive. The vocal melody is good on Did You Take My Love Away From Me. There's interesting production choices in the second verse, which keeps interest and momentum. It's got a good structure and it's a good pace, and I'm grooving to it the whole time. 7 out of 10. 92, Devil Is A Lie. A slightly cliche orchestral opening, feels like a big 90s throwback and that's from someone who doesn't listen to much 90s music. It's got proper character though, it's very enjoyable, there's not much build or structure which kind of lets it down. Surprisingly, I quite like it, 6 out of 10. 91, Pretty Slowly. I literally couldn't think of anything to write for this one, it's so generic. I don't like his voice in the loud sections, 2 out of 10. 90, I Love You, I'm Sorry. I've heard of Gracie Abrams before, but I've never listened to her music. I'm pretty disappointed if this is what it is. Taylor Swift's Cutting Room Floor, 2 out of 10. 89, Belong Together. I swear I've listened to this song already on the list. No? It's kind of hard to tell. 1 out of 10. 88, Right About You. I'm kind of bored by everything being country. It's not a good time to listen to the Hot 100 if you don't like country music. The drum beat is so boring. The fake country fiddle sounds like it was played by a classical musician. That's coming from a classical musician. It's way too clean. It doesn't sound right. 3 out of 10. 87, Love You, Miss You, Mean It. Music needs to do something different sometimes, 2 out of 10. 86. Si no quieres no. I don't know how to say Spanish words. Uh, I'm kind of having a genre of whiplash listening to this. It's safe to say this music was not meant for me. I'm not the target audience. I'm not the consumer. I'm interested in why this music is in the Hot 100 though. Maybe I'll do some research into that. It doesn't seem fair for me to give this a rating, so I won't. 85. I think I'm in love with you. One of the key things for me to enjoy a song is having a good bass line. This song has a great bass line. Wish the lyrics were more interesting. Do all pop songs have to be about love and relationships? Is that a rule? There are other universal emotions too. 4 out of 10, but that's only because of the bass line. 84. Beautiful as you. This is the kind of pop I expected to hear in the Hot 100. The production is good, the lyrics are lyrics, the music is passable. It's got that kind of infectious quality that a lot of pop music has. Very plastic, very digestible. 4 out of 10. M-E-X-I-C-O. Definitely more interesting than the previous Post Malone song on this list. Post Voice doesn't cut it though. It's country about the dirt. The first song on this list had that mess and that, that those tuning issues and that joy that comes with what sounds like genuine music. This doesn't have any of that. 82, Feminine Nominum. Once the beat comes in, it's good. Chapel's harmony is interesting and dark. It has character. The second time she does, can you play a song with a beat? It's not very funny, but the third time kind of makes up for it. 
Kinda. I'm not a fan of the talking bridge, but I get the vibe. Chapel definitely has better songs, I think, but I understand why this is popular. 5 out of 10. 81. Wind Up Missing You. Why do country singers have to sound like this? It makes me feel uncomfortable and I can't explain it. 2 out of 10. La Patrulla. I kind of enjoy the blending of very traditional Spanish-Mexican elements like the brass, the guitars and mariachi with pop idioms. This song does it much better than the other song did, in my opinion. 4 out of 10, it's still not very fun to listen to. 79. Nell. I like pop songs in a different language because I don't really listen to lyrics anyway. This just makes it easier for me. They're very sparse instruments, there's lots of kick and vocal in the mix but barely any of the chords. There's a beat switch. Is this because everyone on TikTok has ADHD now? It's very 2010s. It's not a bad song, it's just boring. 5 out of 10. 78. Never love you again. Well it seems that Post is having a lot of success with this country music. Hearing these songs don't make me want to listen to the album. I'm excited for the country phase to die though. 3 out of 10. Hang tight honey. I can imagine enjoying this song live, I guess, but I'm not listening to it live, so 5 out of 10. 76. Nasty. Fade-ins are pretty unusual, and the intro reverse sounds were interesting, but I did not realise it was going to be the TikTok song. The sections don't gel together, it's very clear that some of this was written for TikTok. I don't enjoy it very much. 2 out of 10. 75. The Boy Is Mine. I haven't heard much about the new Ariana Grande album, apart from Yes And, obviously. Which is a shame, because this is actually a good song. It's got a good beat, it's got an interesting use of space and shape in the accompanying music. The chorus melody being all on one note is kind of disappointing. Can we just move past the Mr. Brightside phase of pop music? I will be saving this to my playlist, though. 7 out of 10. Lonely Road. 74. He referenced Country Roads. I recognise the song. I liked the thing that he made because he referenced the other song that I know and like. I recognised the song and that made me happy. 1 out of 10. 73. Casual. Chapel's back on the list. This song is just okay until you get to the chorus. Sometimes you get songs where the chorus is just much better than the rest of the song. This is one of them, I think. I think the bass line and the chords could be way more interesting, though. I know Chapel has it in her. I'm umming between a 4 and a 5 out of 10, but I think this is a 4 out of 10. Sorry, Chapel. I like the album. 72. Help me. None of these sounds go together. This dude has the voice of a 50-year-old chain smoker. It's too repetitive. 1 out of 10. 71, Chevrolet. No offence, but the rise of this lazy Americana in mainstream pop music is really worrying and boring in equal parts to me. I know I'm looking for a needle in a haystack, but I just want some interesting musical choices in some of these songs. There is nothing to talk about here. 1 out of 10. 70, Band for Band. Very nice to get some British representation on this list. We used to have an empire, now we have this. It's not very enjoyable to listen to, but I like Little Baby's vocals. 3 out of 10. 69, I can't remember how to say this title. Gatter only? Gatter only? Probably Gatter. Starts with 20 seconds of the same chord, really boring to be honest. Once the beat starts, it only gets worse though. The drums don't sound nice, they don't have a nice tone, it actually gets annoying because of how repetitive it is. 2 out of 10. 68, lunch. Finally, some good fucking food. It's because of the bass line, I think. 9 out of 10. No explanation needed. 67. Nights Like This. Another 90 second song. This doesn't feel like a miniature though, it just feels like a short song, like fine. The chords and the production is good, very unique sounding comparative to the rest of the list. Doesn't go anywhere though. 6 out of 10. 66. Devil I've Been. More Post Malone country music. Great. There's a tiny bit of interesting vocal production on some of the words that he sings. Listen out and you might be able to hear it. Apart from that, 4 out of 10. 65. Hide My Gun. Not again. 3 out of 10. 64. One of one. This one has a fun, chill vibe. The drums are too loud compared to the organ chords in the background. I want to hear the full thing, not just part of it. And it's too repetitive. It just does the same thing over and over and over and over and over, and over again. We need some interesting development, occasionally. 5 out of 10. 63. Missing You Like This. A slow dance country song from Post Malone was not something I would expect to like. I think the instrumental is fun. Lots of interesting things going on in the background, but I'm not a fan of the artist on the second verse type thing posters doing on all these songs. But I'm not Anthony Fantano. I'm not reviewing the album, so this is another 5 out of 10. 62. Apple. While I'm a massive fan of Charlie XCX, I haven't listened intently to this song before. It's pretty good, the production is exciting, the sounds that happen connect well, and the vocal production has a pretty unique sound that you don't hear a lot within chart music. The experimental elements of Charlie's style blend really well with the pop stylings that give everyone a lot to enjoy, whether you like chart music or weird music. 8 out of 10. 61. You look like you love. Is that the right title? That doesn't... An empty cowboy song, but the verses are spoken instead of sung. This doesn't belong in the charts. It belongs in an album. 3 out of 10. 60. Goes without saying. I might end up listening to this whole Post Malone album this way. Why is every song from this album charting right now? They aren't that good. 4 out of 10. 59. Whiskey Whiskey. I really hate this. 
It's way too bright, the instrumental sucks, I don't enjoy the distortion on the bass and the ugly repetitive drums, specifically the hi-hats, 2 out of 10. 58. Bulletproof. Immediately I liked the guitar production. Making interesting sounds on the opening is a win. Going straight into a verse that sounds like every other song in this genre, a chorus that sounds like every other song in this genre, and a second verse that sounds identical to the first verse, is a good way of ruining a good idea. 2 out of 10. 57. Wildflower. Billy pulling out some raw and honest vocals on this one. The instrumental doesn't hide behind any production tricks. I like the surprise ending too. Good structure. Even though this isn't my first choice of Billie Eilish song, it's obvious that it's a very well made song. 8 out of 10. 56. Have the heart. This song is really doing nothing for me. Sorry Dolly. 3 out of 10. 55. Fortnite. I've generally managed to avoid listening to any of this Taylor Swift album. I see why people say it was a miss. This is not a great song. Taylor doesn't come across well in this musical or lyrical style, and it just keeps going on without really building to anything. Post does not add in anything either. But I'm scared of the Swifties, so this is a 10 out of 10, definitely. 55. No. 54. Yours. There can't be many more Post Malone songs in this list. Surely. Please. Generally considered skipping this one, but I'm a completionist and I am listening to every song all the way through. 1 out of 10. 53. Dirt Cheap. I actually kind of like this one. It, it has a nice meaning. I like listening to his voice. The production is nice and not obtuse like a lot of the other country music in this list. The song also almost makes me want to start hating the liberal establishment. I can feel myself buying a MAGA hat or something. It's still a country song though, so it's not amazing. 6 out of 10. 52. Mamushi. I respect the confidence of making a song so unbelievably boring. 1 out of 10. 51. High Road. This does have a pretty unique sound, to begin with at least. I mean it just did what every other song in this genre does. Dull. 1 out of 10. 50. Nosedive. Pop and country. Then I wrote the word boring six times. 1 out of 10. 49. 360. Alright, we're in the second half of this list. I could talk for a long time about how much I like this song, and Brat in general. This song is pretty good at using the same material in different ways, but I understand your criticism if you think this song is too repetitive. Probably a decent 7 out of 10. 48. The Door. I could not help but groove to this song. This guy has a good vocal range, there's a nice bass line, it's at a good tempo. It's nothing special but it's great, it's chart music. 7 out of 10. 47. We Can't Be Friends. I respect the quiet, misty intro, but the pop necessity of having the vocals be so loud no matter what ruins it. What if the vocals were covered up and like fit into the rest of the mix and it's like quiet in the background? This song is not as good as the other Ariana Grande song on this list, it's very square. 5 out of 10. 46. It's up. The bars on this are not it. The beat is just fine. Classically, the drums and vocals are too loud and the other stuff is too distant to be heard properly. I understand wanting depth in a mix, but this is an aesthetically pleasing way to go about it. 3 out of 10. 45. Stargazing. From the first three seconds of this song, I knew I wasn't going to enjoy it. It sounds like it's from 2014. Do we have Gen Z nostalgia music already? 0 out of 10. 44. TGIF. I feel like I'm repeating myself. The distorted bass is yucky, the, the beat is too repetitive, the drums are too loud, the backing chords are too quiet. It's almost unlistenable. 1 out of 10. 43. Red Wine Supernova. This is one of my favourite Chapel Roan songs, I can't lie. It's very good, I don't think I need to explain why. 8 out of 10. 42. Finer Things. I haven't heard a 12 bar blues in a long time, and just for that, it's getting points. Yeah, 6 out of 10. No no more to say. 41. Slow it down. This song feels like it was written a lot slower and then at the last minute they decided to speed it up. I feel like I'm having an anxiety attack listening to that open. Then the rest of the song is just kind of normal. I kind of like the boldness of playing around with tempo for the rest of the song. It's pretty clever but it's nothing groundbreaking. My only thought is maybe it was supposed to feel like that because the song's called Slow It Down. But it's not obvious if that's true, so 5 out of 10. 40. What don't belong to me. There are songs where the chorus is the only good part. This is the opposite. The verses are pretty nice, but the chorus turns into the most bland thing possible. 4 out of 10. 39. Stick season. Not really notable in any kind of way, nothing new. 3 out of 10. 38. Another Spanish title. It's the kind of song where the chords do not match the beat at all. The song barely changes throughout the whole thing. 2 out of 10. 37. Wannabe. All these types of songs use the same chord progression. Tonic and a flat 2. Refrigerant feels nice 10 years ago. But it's time we found a new sound, I think. 36. I can do it with a broken heart. Again, I'm scared of the Swifties, so this will be getting a 10 no matter what. However, it's a terrible song. Taylor used to be able to write a melody, I swear. Am I making that up? The production is so boring. Do something interesting, Taylor. People will listen to you no matter what you do. That's a superpower. Why won't you use it? Sorry. 10 out of 10. 35. 
28. That's confusing. There's something genuinely wrong with this song, like either the vocals are out of tune or the melody doesn't fit with the chords without creating a very tense dissonance which did not sound intentional. Probably both. Actually very painful to listen to. 1 out of 10. 34. California Sober. Maybe exposure therapy to this style of music is working on me? I don't know, I'm starting to groove to this even though I don't really want to like it. Because it's changing me, that's a bad thing. 2 out of 10. 33. Guess. This song is super good. I love the structure, the low-key vibe and the slow build. Billy and Charlie complement each other so well on this song. There's a lot of fun to be had listening to this and the production of the synths on it are really great to listen to. Lots of variety, lots of interesting sounds. 8 out of 10. 32. Who? The acoustic guitars suck in this song so bad. Some of the production is nice, the singing is fine, the songwriting is very generic though so it can't be higher than a 4 out of 10. 31. I am not okay. I feel like My Chemical Romance did this song better, mainly because theirs was a comedy and this is a tragedy. It just makes me roll my eyes to be honest. Is this the level of emotional intelligence we're allowed to have in the charts? I feel disrespected just listening to this. Baby's First Depression, 1 out of 10. 30. Houdini. Sounds like Eminem forgot how to make new music. Maybe he didn't know how to make music to begin with though, 1 out of 10. 29. Big Dogs. This is a fairly gnarly synth opening to it, the vocals are dynamic and quite expressive for this type of music, kind of like a Kendrick Lamar style vocal. List. The drums are fairly lacking, especially for hi-hats, but overall the song is good. 6 out of 10. 28. Kalani. This song has a strange quality of no part of the mix sticking out like a main element, apart from the hi-hats. The vocals are dull, the chords are uninteresting and way back in the mix. The other drums blend in well, but the hats are just there and it's the only thing you can really pay attention to. What a strange thing. It's very surreal, but like not in a good way, so 2 out of 10. 27. Pink Pony Club. Chapel makes me very conflicted. I wasn't really interested in the piano beginning of this song, but once the synths and the drums come in, I'm a bit more intrigued. It's definitely one of her weaker songs, but I think people are enjoying this because of the lyrics, not because of the music. Five out of 10. 26, like that. Pretty lacklustre beat and overall not super interesting. But then Kendrick starts going off and starting a whole thing. And honestly, I can't give this lower than five out of 10, just for that minute that Kendrick had. Losers. The only loser here is me because I had to listen to all three and a half minutes of this. One out of ten. Twenty-four. Saturn. The good bass line rule staying true again. Get a real basis on your songs and you will create a good groove is what I'm learning here. Scissors vocals are nice and the song is good. Seven out of ten. Twenty-three. Wrong ones. Post Malone is really showing off his vocals on this one. I'm pleasantly surprised. The instrumental is not super impressive but it's definitely on the heavier grittier side which works well here. Maybe this is like a five out of ten, maybe a six out of ten. If you told me at the start of this list that I'd be a Post Malone country song convert, I wouldn't have believed you. I'm a changed man. 22. Austin. This is cute, but so overdone. 2 out of 10. 21. I remember everything. This song slipped out of my brain the minute it was finished playing, and I don't remember a moment from it, so I'm gonna guess maybe like a 4 out of 10. 20. Miles on it. This is like a 2014 pop song mixed with country i guess in that way it's kind of original and i can't hate on it too much but actually i definitely can because it's two genres that offer nothing to each other and only work because they're so bland three out of ten 19 hot to go exclamation point this song reminds me weirdly of an old Rhett and link comedy song and i'm only making that connection right now listen to rub some bacon on it and tell me it doesn't sound exactly the same as this this song is just fine i heard it at a club once and it was a lot of fun it's hard to hate but it's not blowing me away or anything five out of ten uh no i i, I lie i like it i like the chorus six out of ten 18 lies 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 the problem with downbeat pop music because you can't do anything that actually makes it sound sad because pop music always has to be super clean. So, 1 out of 10. 17. Guy for that. It's that same goddamn drum beat again. I have nothing left to say about Post Malone. 16. Pink Skies. I like the intro. It actually has a unique intimacy to this with all those plucked strings and the out of tune guitar is nice and sweet. The vocals are still mixed too loud but, you know, not everything can be perfect I guess, even when they're trying to make it sound perfect. 5 out of 10. 15. Ain't No Love in Oklahoma. I like a song that actually wants to give me a proper introduction. Combs is a great voice for this style of music and it feels like the musicians are really and actually vaguely feeling the vibe of the music, which is nice and kind of rare. It's not super clean, but still has a chart sounding finesse. The simpleness of the drums, specifically the fill right before the chorus, just eight, just eight snare hits in a row. That's good. Seven out of ten. Fourteen. Cowgirls. From the first two seconds of the song, I had an opinion about it and that's not a good thing. <sighs> Country is trying to cross pollinate with electronic and pop genres, and it's a recipe for making something that's broadly unlistenable. Skip. One out of ten. Thirteen. Pour me a drink. I have nothing left to say about Post Malone. Twelve. Beautiful things. 
The vocals are so loud I can't even hear the guitar at the beginning. And the guitar sounds like it could be interesting, but I, I generally can't hear it. Who does it serve to have the pop vocals so loud that you can't hear the rest of the song? Oh, and then it changes halfway through to that song that's popular on TikTok. Got it. A song being popular on TikTok is not in and of itself a negative quality, but having a section of the song that's so different to the rest of the song, specifically so it can be a TikTok sound, is cringe. Get over it. 2 out of 10. 11. Too sweet. When the vocals came in, I breathed a sigh of relief that I could actually hear everything else that was happening, because the instrumental is good, and the vocals are good. This typical hosier vocal production is quite nice and makes his voice stand out from everything else on the list. The chorus and the verse actually go quite well together in the song, even though the chorus has been played on TikTok rather a large amount. The drum beat on this song is cool, but I think it loses some kind of energy about halfway through and needs, you know, needs to pick me up to keep it going. Six out of ten though. Right, we're in the top ten now. Lose control. This is following the good baseline rule. It's got nice vocals, it's got a distinct style, it's got a unique character in the charts which doesn't sound like any other song I've listened to so far. It's not the most complex song, but solid and does a lot with what it has. Good baseline. Seven out of ten. Nine. Please, please, please. This song's production is very minimal, allowing for a good structure and a build-up of intensity. Sabrina's whispery vocals in the verse lead into the chorus well. Harmonically, this song is pretty adventurous. It probably has the most chords out of any song on this list, which is cool. Cool feature. That said, this doesn't quite hit the spot for me in the same way that, say, Espresso does. So, let's say 6 out of 10. 8. Million Dollar Baby. The vocals really took me back when they came in. I did not expect them at all to sound like that with this beat, which is pretty cool. Like having the, the dark kind of instrumental and then these falsetto kind of vocals. Interesting. I really like the juxtaposition of those two sounds. It kept me engaged. The vocals feel pretty far back in the mix and I literally can't understand a word of what he's saying, but I'm okay with that. So modern day Bee Gees, 7 out of 10. Number 7. Espresso. Carpenter's second entry on the top 10 and it's much more deserved than Please 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 in my opinion. This was by far the standout moment from her album, and I can see why people like this. It's infectious, her vocals are perfect for the song, the melody is very liquid and travels around the beat in a really engaging way for me. Like, it's an 8 out of 10. Good luck, babe. Chapel Roan is back, and she's got a great chorus, but an underwhelming first verse. Once you get past that hurdle, it's a pretty good song and really engaging to listen to. Chapel's vocals are good, and it's pretty cool that a song like this can get into the Billboard Top 10. I don't know what's up with the Dante's Inferno backroom horror vibes of all those descending key changes at the end. But I like it. Good job, Chapel. 8 out of 10. Number 5. Birds of a Feather. I remember this song in my head being very light with not much groove and energy, but I was wrong. The bass and the drums really power through and then Billy and the chords just sit on top of it. I've heard the analogy of like a swan floating on water gracefully on the surface of the lake, but then the legs are like kicking away underneath like a proper powerhouse. You know, it's like all under the surface, and that analogy really fits this track. I was misguided in my previous distaste for this song's popularity, and I'm issuing a formal apology. 8 out of 10. Number 4. Not Like Us. Kendrick scored so hard with this song. The beat, the bars, the complete destruction of Drake while also making a banger. I've listened to this track like 50 times since it came out. Of course it gets the first 10 on this list. 10 out of 10. Number 3. Die with a smile. It's clear that Bruno took a lot from his work with Silk Sonic. He can write a good melody, that's for sure. I don't find the verses very engaging, especially compared to the pre-chorus chorus and every other part of this song. It could have been a bit more in inventive rather than just two chords. The rest of the song is fine though. I would prefer a slightly less dopey sound from Bruno because I think that's where he shines, but this is pretty good. 6 out of 10. Number 2. I had some help. Again, this feels like one of those songs that was written slower and then sped up by upper management because it didn't have enough appeal or whatever. I think it just needs some time to breathe, maybe just like 10 BPM slower. 4 out of 10. And finally, number 1. A bar song, in brackets, tipsy. Somehow I've never heard this song in my life, and I did not think it would sound like this. It's the most generic and bland piece of music on this list. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I am. How does this happen? I'm really kind of disappointed. 2 out of 10. So, what did we learn from this experience, class? Well. I think there's kind of three types of music that are really popular in the charts right now, and that's kind of like the girly and queer pop, like the Chapel Room, the Billie Eilish, the Sabrina Carpenter, the Charlie XCX, you know, kind of like, kind of upbeat club music that's focused on energy and, you know, kind of like modern day living. And then there's, you've kind of got this nostalgic element of like this kind of manly Americana. It's like mainly the country music, the Post Malone and the, I generally can't remember another country artist on that list. And then you've got kind of the miscellaneous, which I guess would kind of be the TikTok popular songs, maybe the Taylor Swift and the hip hop music. And here are some takeaways from how to make a good song in the charts. Have a good bass line. Have a real person playing bass guitar. 
this is one of the standout things that I took away from this, is if you've got a good bass line, you're way more likely to have a, a better song. And even if you've got a bad song, a good bass line can make it listenable. It changes the whole vibe of a song in a way that no other element of the mix really can. Number two is to mix things properly. I, vocals don't need to be this loud, drums don't need to be this loud. People, people like music, I think. Like, we're not just listening to a song because we want to hear some words that someone said. We want to hear the music that they've made too, I think. And the best music, like the Hosier, for example, mixed really well. You can hear every element. It's very synergistic and it, and it works and it works well. And number three, of course, is that everything kind of sounds the same. I don't just mean in the list that, you know, obviously there's, there's unique genres and unique styles, but there's nothing really completely new that's coming out. I guess the closest thing you've got is like Charlie XCX. She's kind of experimenting a little bit more of what pop music actually means but a lot of this is looking back to earlier genres like obviously the the country music is very looking back into like the late 20th century in pop music and it's kind of a trend we're seeing everywhere in in art like films music classical music in the last you know 20 30 years there's not really been that much development in the sound or the style or the aesthetics of all these genres and the mainstream's kind of been stunted a little bit in a way that I don't think we have had throughout the rest of history like the 80s sound different from the 90s the 90s sound different from the 2000s the 2000s sound kind of similar to the 2010s and the 2010s sound basically identical to the 2020s so far and maybe that's a problem maybe it's not maybe we've reached peak music and it's never going to get better than this I don't believe that though because there's plenty of really interesting stuff that's happening underground and it just needs a way of shining into the charts I think um, yeah, bye, I guess. Um, no, I guess I should say subscribe or something. If anyone's still watching this far, we're probably over 20 minutes in now to this. I've kind of sped run this video. Um, I'm just gonna ad lib a little bit more. What, click a video here, click subscribe there. I could pull a prank on myself and put subscribe there and put the other video there. Yeah. Okay.